Hello everyone, we're going to go through our first lesson today on SAT math. We're going to go through exponents and radicals, so let's get started. The first thing you're going to, you're going to want to notice is PEMDAS, where we do parentheses first, followed by exponents, then multiplication and division, and lastly addition and subtraction. And these are the laws of exponents we need to know. Um, anything to the power of 1 is just going to be itself. Anything to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. When you multiply two exponents together, um, and they have the same base, you can add those exponents. When you're dividing two exponents together, together and they have the same base, um, you can subtract the exponents. When you have, um, let's say, 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 4, you can multiply the exponents together as they do here and get 3 to the power of 8. Here, um, they have in parentheses x, y to the power of m. Both x to the power of m and y to the power of m are necessary. Um, it's not just x, y to the power of m x over y to the power of m, um, it's going to be equal to x to the power of m over y to the power of m. And anything to the power of a negative exponent is just going to be 1 over um, the base to the power of that exponent. So this is our practice problem set 1. And I'm just going to walk you guys through it. So a negative 1 to the power of 4, how do we solve that? Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 again is going to be 1. So it's just 1 times 1, which is equal to 1. And we can rewrite negative 1 to the power of 5. Uh, we don't even need to rewrite it, actually. We can just do 1 times negative 1 and get negative 1. Here, we can rewrite negative 1 to the power of 10 as negative 1 to the power of 5 to the power of 2. And if we substitute in, knowing that negative 1 to the power of 5 is negative 1, it's just going to be negative 1 squared, which is going to give me 1. For this one, I can rewrite as negative 1 to the power of 5 to the power of 3. And I can set this equal to negative 1 cubed, which is just going to give me negative 1. Same thing here. I can rewrite negative 1 to the power of 8 as um, negative 1 to the power of 4 to the power of 2, which is just 1 squared, which is 1. Here I have the negative outside. So 1 to the power of 8 is going to be 1. And negative, um, negative outs outside, we could rewrite this as negative 1 times 1 to the power of 8 or negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. This is um, a little more complicated. This is going to be equal to negative parentheses first, negative 1 to the power of 8 is going to give me, um, we saw here it's going to give me 1, so it's going to be negative parentheses 1, which is just negative 1. Here um, it's negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. And here, um, it's just going to be equal to, again, negative 1 times 3 cubed, or negative 1 times um, 27, which is also equal to negative 27. So you kind of get the picture. Um, you can go through numbers 10 through 18 if you want. I'll go through a couple miscellaneous ones. So anything to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. 6 to the power of 1 is just, come up, it's just going to become 1 over 6 to the power of 1, which is just 1 to the power of 6, or 1 over 6, sorry. Um, same with 4 to the power of negative 1. It's just going to become 1 over 4 to the power of 1, which is 1 over 4. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And again, just anything to the power of 0 is 1. 3 squared is 9. This is equal to 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. You get the picture. I'm going through an example problem. If 3 to the power of x plus 2 equals 9, or 3 to the power of x plus 2 equals y, then what's going to be the value of 3 to the power of x in terms of y? So what we can do in this one is know the law of exponents, um, that anything, if we add exponents together, then this here is going to equal 3 to the power of x times 3 squared, and then we can add the x and the 2, and this is going to be equal to y. And we know, um, we know now 3 to the power of x times 3 squared is y, so we can um, solve 3 squared. We get 3 to the power of x plus 9 equals y. And now all I need to do, or not plus 9, sorry, times 9, we can divide by 9 on both sides, and we get 3 to the power of x equals y over 9, which is why we got d here. The second example, um, we see we have the same bases here, if 3 to the power of a plus 1 equals 3 to the power of negative a plus 7, what's going to be the value of a? So since they have the same base, I can cancel them out and set the exponents equal to each other. And when I solve that out, I just get a is equal to 3. In this example, they have if 2a minus b is 4, it's going to be the value of 4 to the power of a over 2 to the power of b. So what I want to do is just realize that 4 to the power of a is the same thing as writing 2 squared to the power of a. Now, the reason we did this is so we can get the same base of 2 on both the numerator and the denominator. And then knowing um, the rule, 
that x to the power of m to the power of n, sorry, that was atrocious, x to the power of m to the power of n equals x to the power of mn. So knowing this, I can rewrite 4 to the power of a as 2 squared to the power of a and multiply that 2 in the a to get 2 to the power of 2a over 2 to the power of b. And knowing the other exponent rule that um, x to the power of m over x to the power of n equals x to the power of m minus n, I can take this 2 to the power of b here and subtract the b from this top exponent 2a. So it comes 2 to the power of 2a minus b, and they tell us 2a minus b is 4, so we substitute that as 4, and we get 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And square roots are also just fractional exponents. Um, the form is if you have an n on the outside, and you have, let's say, x to the power of m, this is the same thing as writing x to the power of m over n. The denominator goes outside the radical, and the numerator goes to the power of the exponent inside the radical. Okay, um, example four, which of the following equals the quadruple root of x to the power of five. Um, the fourth root equates to a fractional exponent of one fourth. So we just take um, we just take this and rewrite it in this form, in fractional form, which this becomes x to the power of the um, inside exponent becomes the numerator outside the radical denominator. So it becomes x to the power of five fourths or C. In this example, they tell us which of the following is an equivalent form of x to the power of two to the power of three fourths. So what I can rewrite this as is first I multiply these two, right, like I did here, and I get x to the power of two times three fourths or x to the power of three fourths when you simplify x to the power of six fourths. And I rewrite this again in this form. I rewrite this as x to the power of m over n. Um, I'm, rewriting, I'm rewriting this form back to this form here. And when I take the square root of x cubed, I realize x squared times x is inside the radical. And I can take an x out and leave an x in, which gives me a solution of b. Now let's go into some more practice problems. We have the square root of 12. We want to simplify the radical. This is the same thing as writing the square root of 4 times 3. Take the square root of 2. This becomes 2 square root 3. Same thing here. If I realize that this is the same thing as writing 16 times 6, I can take the square root of 16, get 4 on the outside. It becomes 4 root 6. Same thing here. This is the same thing as writing 9 times 5. The square root of 9 is 3, so it becomes 3 root 5, and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to solve one of these, let's say the ones that have a variable, um, I don't know, let's say some random ones. Let's say 14 and 17. 14, you have 4 square root 6 is equal to 2 cube root of 3, not cube root, square root of 3x. Um, what you can do is square both sides to get rid of this radical, get the x on the outside. So I take out, um, yeah, I take out the radical now. So 4 squared is 16. We're multiplying that by the square root of 6 squared, which is just 6. And this is equal to 2 squared, which is 4, times the square root of 3x squared, which is just 3x. And this becomes 96 equals 12x. Just divide by 12 on both sides. And I get x is equal to 8. And now, um, let's solve number 17. We have 3 the square root of 8 equals x square root 2. Again, what we want to do is just square both sides. And when we do this, this gives us 3 squared is 9 times the square root of 8 squared is just 8 equals x squared times 2. So now 72 equals 2x squared, divide both sides by 2, and I get x squared is 36. Um, sorry, not divide. Take the square root of both sides, and I find that x is just equal to 6. And that's how you would solve um, one of these problems. And um, 4 through 9.